Well, what we're seeing is the Benjamin Hammer House, built in 1881. There were not many buildings in town when this house was built, especially residential structures, because this is one of the earliest. So the town was very small. We do know from information that we have that people put up fences around their cabins or their houses in order to keep other people's cows from going across their lawns because people were driving cattle out to pasture just at the edge of town. Benjamin Hammer, at the time this house was built, was part owner of one of the quarries in town. So he chose some of the finest colored rhyolite for his house. Interestingly enough, the Hammers only lived here a few years, but they were the original builders, so the house has been given their name as a historic name. So they lived here until about 1889. And they moved west because he was a sheep herder. He did a lot of things. He was causing a lot of dissension in the area because he was he was uh, grazing sheep in, on a cattleman's... In, in cattle country. Right. Between 1889 and 1904, two other people owned this house. We don't know anything about them. Dr. Alexander bought this house in 1902. Dr. Alexander was an Eastern doctor and he actually graduated in 1885, married a woman who was a Vassar graduate. And she became ill, and so he decided to move her to Fort Collins, okay. thinking it would help her health. She was here one year and died. So after she died, he decided Fort Collins was getting too big for him. So he came to Castle Rock, set up a practice, and in 1902, he bought this house. His second wife was a woman educated at Wesleyan University in Ohio. She became very depressed after the birth of her third child. And in 1907, she hung herself out in the barn. It was a great loss to the family because she was a very popular woman, belonged to many of the clubs, and did a lot of good in the community. So not only did Dr. Alexander miss her, but the community missed her. In 1909, Nina Thomas and her husband moved out from the East. He had tuberculosis, and they moved out here for treatment. Dr. Alexander treated Nina's husband, and he died several years after they were out here, and it was logical that Nina and George should get together. George practiced medicine until he was 80, 1947. Yes, he died in 1947, and he was at that time the oldest practicing doctor in Colorado. In fact, he was recognized nationally as one of five of the longest practicing physicians in the United States. So their family was the last owners of this house, the Alexander family. Uh, their children, grandchildren, and those are the people that we bought the house from. When we bought it, people refer to it as the doctor's house, even though Hammer built the house and was the original owner. In people's minds in town, it's the doctor's house because Dr. Alexander practiced from here. Dr. Alexander's office was in the, uh, one of the front rooms of the house, and this downstairs hallway off this room was his waiting room. And there were some coat racks around the sides of that room. And when we first moved in, some of the people who had been here as patients would say, oh, I had my arms set in one of the rooms in the front of your house. And so that was fun. And there was a tremendous interest in the community in the inside of this house because nobody had been in it for so many years. We have a few larger things that were in the family. A child's sled and a dress that had been Nina Alexander's. There's a nice picture of Dr. Alexander, Nina. The picture rails are still here. 
the woodwork is original. It's been painted a few times in some places, in other places it's natural, but those kinds of things were exciting to us. There are bins mm. built into the kitchen that they used to keep potatoes in and flour and things of that nature. There aren't many old houses that still have the bins in the kitchen. The lintel above the windows and doorways is a stylized stone Roman arch that emphasizes the raised keystone shown here. And then there's elaborate carving in between the lintels and the window heads. You don't think of buying a house as being an impulse purchase, but it kind of develops that way when you're, when you're interested in old properties particularly. So when we moved here and found this house was, yes, I think this house would go on the National Register. So we simply called the State Historical Society, had them send out form. Application form. Application form, fill it out and and Except it happened. It, you know, it now just that said. was 1993 when, mm -hmm. when we did that. It has subsequently also been placed on the local landmark list by the town of Castle Rock. It's the only residence in Castle Rock that's on the National Register and we're kind of pleased about that.